Well, Jay, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it today. Matt, thank you for having me. And the limited time we have, there's there's no way we're going to be able to unpack all the layers of this film. I am really curious about the, the starting point that you had for writing this story, um, because there's so many, like I said, layers between Jonathan's perspective and Cairo's and just the whole setting, uh, the allure and seduction of literature and the written word as a whole. Sort of what was the catalyst to uh, to start writing this story? Um, first of all, you're going to make my accent. Here comes my accent because now I'm hearing yours and here comes mine. <laughs> That's fine. Well, let's put it all out the wind. <laughs> um, so this was originally written as a play. I was living in New York City bartending for Broadway shows. And um, this was post the recession. I was an actor not working. And I was like, what am I going to do with my certificate of participation from an acting school? So I was like, I guess I'll write something. So I called um, one of my very best friends, Julianne. And uh, I knew I wanted to create something for her. So I asked her if she could play any character, who would it be? And she said, Rhoda Penmark from The Bad Seed, who, if you remember, is a psychotic killer child. So I was like, okay, great. I'm going to write a villain. So I did set out to write a villain. And the original iteration, Cairo is like all the way a villain. And then Me Too happened. And I was gobsmacked with the fact that I had written not one, but two villains. And I was sort of like, through this whole process was like dismantling my internalized misogyny that didn't let me see that I had written what I didn't see what John was. So that got to be revealed to me, which was really exciting. So in the sort of iterations of the screenplay, I was really able to explore the exploration of him that way in the same way I was sort of real time exploring it, which was really exciting. And the, the voice the voice of that sort of reasoning within me became Beatrice, who is my favorite character I've ever written. That is her. I love her so much. Um, and so it, I, I think I found through, through that and through obviously shifting it from play to screenplay that I had now two characters who were really rounded emotionally. Um, and so I didn't have a perfect villain or a perfect victim. I had people who were, I think were closer to real life who are in the gray. Um, and you know, all of the characters in this movie, the, co the whole court is out of order. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but it was fun. It was really fun. I realized that I was like having so much fun writing characters who did not fit the binary. I think the binary is really boring. And I think it's really boring for women. It's the same, I call it the damsel box. It's the same box that it is always been it's just got different wrapping on it now if we can only be perfect victims you know as a stage play was that your attention going in then as directing to still direct it minimalistic so that it sort of still felt that way absolutely i think because the language is so heightened deliberately like it lives three feet off of the ground it's not supposed to be naturalistic so i think that still keeping it like a play helps the audience sort of uh, lift up into that space of i don't want to say magical realism but almost mm -hmm. and it's like who's afraid of Virginia Woolf is a huge influence on this film. Um, I think when you when you trap characters together in a space like that, there's so much more room for them um, than there is for like like expositional stuff that you don't really need. And I think that also for these characters, when you feel that intensely about a person, they're the only person that exists to you in the world. So like, of course, there are more people, but we're we're in Cairo's perspective. Like she is so sort of single tracked about this this instance and it's quite romantic and then horrifying for her and the intimacy of it was very very important to me yeah and, and you turned dialogue that was just so expertly written and you turned jenna ortega loose with that kind of dialogue <laughs> it is just like I, I i can't even put it into words was was she in the back of your mind at any time or how did you bring her into the picture and how perfect was that she, she perfect is what it was. Perfect is what it was. Um, no, she was not. I hadn't, I hadn't really, I didn't really know because this is pre Wednesday. So mm -hmm. I'd seen the fallout, which I really resisted watching for a long time because I thought it was going to be something that it wasn't. The fallout is so good. Um, and she's so funny. Like she's a very, very funny person. Um, and then we met and our chemistry was off the charts but she was so intelligent and she understood things about the character that I had not said aloud but that I thought and so I just knew that she understood who she was and watching her I think one of the most extraordinary things that Jenna does is that you're what Kyra's a really complicated character to play and it would be very easy to 
make her quite arch, you know, and like very pretentious. But everything felt very natural with Jenna. And she, you watch her heart break in real time. And then you watch her calcify. Like you watch the scales grow over her. And it's very subtle and it's very scary. And I think that the subtle shifts that she's able to make in her face, like there's a moment, you'll know what I'm talking about at the very end of the movie when she's talking to Winnie and her whole, it's like her her whole face just kind of slides into something new. It's so scary. It's so scary and it's so beautiful and it's so sad. Like she just has, I, I, I feel the same way with Martin. They, they both just have such extraordinary humanity for these characters who are, really complicated yeah and it makes them real and relatable and you're right it's almost like i wanted to go back and rewatch the film and will to see if if jenna's was always if kyra was always in that mindset and when that shift took place because you're like wow was she that way in the beginning and i just missed it because she's so brilliant at what her plan and plot was it's just it's just incredible and you mentioned beatrice which i've got her in my notes that the thing she says i'm just listening to this and i was like i want to live next door to this woman uh, I just want to, I want them to be my neighbors. I want to come over and drink wine and just listen to her go off. Um, yeah. And you mentioned how fun it was for, for you to create her. Is there, is there a little bit of you in her or is it just, oh my God. where did yes. that come from? Yeah. I mean, they're all, they are all me to an extent. And, you know, because this was the first thing that I had ever written, all of these characters are sort of facets of my personality that scare me. Um, and I think that Beatrice, I feel like I feel like women in these scenarios that Beatrice is in where what happens happens with her husband, like often they're quite upset or they're they're totally destroyed by what happens because women in in cinema or and in literature are often represented as just like a counterpart to their husbands. But Beatrice is totally fine. You know what I mean? Like she's like, what what Jonathan has done now is complicated her life. Like things were really easy and fine with them. And I think they have a lot of love between them. He, you know, it's tricky for John because he's not nearly as successful as she is, but it's not until he does what he does that she's like, it's not like she's going to crumble to pieces. She's fine. But she's like, you have now made, you have now made a situation that was fine and nice, uncomfortable and boring and, I'm I'm done with this. And I, I just found that so interesting. Like she said, she, Beatrice says the shit that you like are thinking about in the shower that you wish you had said in a moment. You know what I mean? 100%. Like she... <laughs> yeah. And, and I love the casting of her too, because I got to, I got to frame these words correctly, but I'm glad that it wasn't just some typical waif of a person that we see in these characters all the time. Um, yeah. She seemed real. She seemed like a, a person that could live next door to me that I run into all the time and have conversations with, and I would know this person. So oh, I think yeah. the casting for her, obviously, as well as Martin and Jenna was, was spot on. So uh, again, we could take so much time and break down so many other layers, but I appreciate your time today. Good luck with the film. It was one of my favorite so far this year. I know it's only January, but it's going to continue <laughs> on to be one of my favorites this year. And I wish you the best of luck with it. Thank you, Matt. Are you from Texas? Yes, I am from Dallas. Okay. Very well oh, you done. are. Okay. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm good at the regionalism. Um, thank you. Now, now, you, now you've set my accent off for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. You bet. See you.